Today, we're taking a look at the world's first 4K quantum dot OLED monitor, the Alienware AW3225QF. We'll talk specs and features, demo some gameplay, compare it to my non-QD OLED Alienware monitor, talk about a few things you'll want to know, and let you know why even though we're barely in January, this just may be the best gaming monitor of 2024. Let's roll that unboxing. Full disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Dell did not send me this monitor for free. In fact, every time I make one of these monitor videos, I lose about $300 because I then have to sell it after the review on the used market for a reduced price. But even if I did get this monitor for free, I'd still give my unbiased, actual, factual, honest opinion. That said, if you enjoy this content and want to help support the channel so I can recoup my losses and afford more things to review, consider not only hitting that subscribe button and notification bell, but using the links in the description, which go directly to Dell, and help me earn a small commission so this channel doesn't bankrupt me. Now let's not waste any more time and get into today's video. The Alienware AW3225QF is a 31.6 inch 4K or 3840x2160P QD OLED gaming monitor with a 240Hz refresh rate and at the time of this video has a retail price of $1199. A build quality is what you'd expect from an Alienware monitor. It's got the typical off-white body mixed with black parts, and instead of having LED lights built into the back of the stand like my 38-inch ultra-wide, it's got an alien head and a 32 on the back of the panel, which glow and can have the color changed in the menu. It's the same hard plastic shell you've seen before, with an identical V-shaped footprint that measures about 17 inches wide and will stick out from front to back about 12 inches, so depending on what you have on your desk, you might want to mount it, and yes, it is 100mm by 100mm VESA mount compatible. The screen has a 1700R curve and is the first glossy screen I've had in my possession, and if you're coming from a matte display like I am, there are some things you'll want to take note of. If you have a flash or bright light pointed directly at it, you'll notice the reflection, but more subtle lights like the average lamp or LED light strip shouldn't cause an issue. If you have a light bar in your setup like I do, you might have to compromise here and turn it off when gaming or doing any kind of color correction, and that's because as you can see here, unlike my matte display, the light bleeds down onto the monitor. It's not so noticeable when the display is on, so whether you need to adjust is up to you. It is height adjustable and can be raised for a max height of about 23 inches. It can swivel from left to right and vice versa, and can tilt upwards and slightly downward. Now, the one thing it can't do is pivot, so you may want to consider a monitor mount if you plan to do so, and in case you're measuring for your space, the screen sits about 28 inches wide and just over 16 inches from the top bezel to the bottom. Now, taking a look at the back from left to right, we have your power connector all by itself a joystick toggle in the middle bottom area to navigate the menu. On the right side, we have all your connections, which include a super speed USB type B upstream port, two super speed USB type A downstream ports, an HDMI 2.1 fixed rate link connection with eARC, an HDMI 2.1 FRL connection without eARC, and a DisplayPort 1.4 connection. That's right, we now have eARC on an HDMI 2.1 port, and while there may be monitors on the market that already have this, this is the first time I've had one in my possession, which now means you no longer have to use a line audio out jack and can use a compatible soundbar. This is going to open up so many possibilities. On the front bottom of the monitor, you've got another super speed USB type A downstream port and a super speed USB type C downstream port with power charging. While it might look like these are speaker grills on the bottom, these are more than likely vents as the monitor has no built-in speakers. If we click the joystick in the middle bottom of the monitor, we can access a quick menu where we can select options like Alien Vision, where you can alter the way a portion of the screen looks or access a crosshair, change brightness or contrast, switch input sources, change preset modes, and access the dark stabilizer. If we click up, we can access the full menu where you have more options like game enhance mode to view your frame rate, change the alien effects lighting color on the back of the monitor, 
access smart HDR to switch out different HDR modes, or perform a pixel refresh, which takes up to eight minutes, or a total panel refresh if you've had static images up too long, take caution because it does take up to an hour. A few things from the website, it is a G-Sync compatible monitor. As you can see, my computer does recognize it and is VESA Adaptive Sync Display certified. It's got Comfort View Plus like most Dell monitors, which reduces blue light and lessens eye strain, has 140 pixels per inch, features HDR with Dolby Vision, has an infinite contrast ratio, and VESA Display HDR True Black 400 technology. For consoles, it's got variable refresh rate and auto low latency mode. And like I said before, since it has an HDMI 2.1 connection with eARC, it not only means you can get 4K 120 Hertz out of your PS5 or Series X, but you can connect a compatible soundbar to get Dolby Atmos surround sound or just take full advantage of Sony's 3D audio and get really immersive in your gameplay. It's got a 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, and when it comes to ghosting and blurring, I can't detect a single artifact when running a UFO test. Everything is sharp and accurate as can be. This is by far the best monitor I've ever tested when it comes to ghosting. I fully expect this monitor to leave me on red and never talk to me again. When it comes to backlight bleed, I might as well call in Vin Diesel because all my naked eye can see is pitch black. I can literally max out the ISO on my camera and you can't detect a single bleed spot. Much like the ghosting and blur test, this is once again the best monitor I've tested. It's safe to say I'm impressed, and with the advertised 99% DCI-P3 color gamut and Delta E under 2, this just might work for a content creator who likes to gain from time to time, like myself. When it comes to the advertised 99% DCI-P3, it fell a bit short as I ended up with 95%. For you photographers out there who print and rely on the Adobe RGB color space, I got 94%, and Alienware once again hit the nail on the head as the sRGB color gamut came in at 100%, meaning this would make an excellent monitor for content creation. Now I use the Alienware AW3821DW 38-inch 1440p monitor as my main display and have gotten used to its IPS panel and the one difference I automatically noticed once I powered on the QD OLED is how much of a difference the black levels make. Now, this is my first experience with the QD OLED monitor so maybe I'm a bit late but now that I'm here I've got to say if gaming is your main thing and you do a little content creation on the side you really need to be looking at this monitor. We've already seen how accurate this monitor can be when it comes to ghosting and blur, so there's no doubt this is going to be terrific for fast-paced PvP games, so whether Call of Duty or Fortnite, Dell really outdid themselves with this one. Am I impressed? Absolutely. Am I going to keep it? Well, I don't quite think I'm ready to dive in just yet. 
While I absolutely think this is a winner if your primary use is gaming, if you find yourself editing more often than not and tend to have static images on screen like I do for extended periods of time, I just think it makes more sense to stick with an IPS display for now. Yes, burn-in isn't as big of an issue as it used to be. Yes, you can refresh your pixels and panel. And yes, Dell even has a three-year warranty, which includes premium panel exchange and an advanced exchange service and will replace the monitor for burn-in. But I know my habits and I don't really want to deal with hour-long panel refreshes, especially because I leave up static images on screen all the time. I just look at my wallpaper. It's only a matter of time until that burns in. So for now, I'm going to stick with my 38 inch ultra wide. But again, if you're a gamer, this is a winner. And I know I haven't tested a ton of QD OLED monitors yet, but if that's what you're looking for, the search ends here. Now let me know how you feel in the comments below. I'm not a professional monitor reviewer like say Hardware Unboxed, but I do the best with what I've got. And don't forget to use my link to support the channel if you decide to buy, but that's going to wrap things up for today. I'll see you next time.